is iDizzy81, and I'm back with another Dizzy Talks with the Playback Gaming Network. And before we get everything started, I do want to give a shout out to two other entities, two other podcasts. The Iron Lords podcast, they record every Sunday. They upload to YouTube, SoundCloud, and they also upload to the Playback Gaming website. Uh, you can check them out again every Sunday. Join Lord Cognito, Lord Sleep. Lord Addict, among others, and they typically have a special guest per week, uh, which is really awesome to check out. I do want to give another shout out to my compadre over at the Inner Circle Network, Cal L. Uh, he does the podcast Pod Shots every Tuesdays. Uh, I definitely highly suggest you know peeking in and listening to what he has to say as far as his insight with the the gaming industry. He records again every Tuesdays. He uploads to YouTube, iTunes, and I believe he does upload to SoundCloud. Uh, both of these will have links in the description below so that you can go check both of these ones out. You know, it's been about uh, two weeks since I did the last one. I wanted to do these weekly. was just kind of busy last week. wasn't able to get around to it. Plus, uh, with the, the Scorpio reveal on the Thursday, it kind of was almost like a vacuum. It sucked up all the attention. Um, and it just wouldn't have made sense for me to be, do one a couple days prior. Uh, but today I'm going to be talking about uh, the specs with the Scorpio, an outlook for E3 for Microsoft, the status of Xbox gaming. Uh, we have another beer review. Um, a little bit about uh, Focus Home Interactive, a Destiny 2 theory that I have, and as well as a ARC update. Um, so uh, let's get right into it. So, last Thursday, Digital Foundry had the privilege of being able to show off and showcase the Scorpio specs for the Project Scorpio. Not named just yet. I really would like for them to keep Project Scorpio or just even be the Xbox Scorpio. It's not going to happen, but that'd be so awesome. It, it, it's a pretty, it has a catchy name. I like it. So, the Project Scorpio was everything that they said that it would be. And then some for some individuals, it, it, for the others, it was not what it was all cracked up to be, you know, whatever. So the CPU looks like is going to be eight custom x86 cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. The GPU has 40 customized computation units at 1,172 megahertz. The memory is going to be 12 gigabytes of GDDR5. Memory bandwidth at 326 gigabytes per second. The hard drive, it looks like that they are going to be getting rid of the 500 gigabyte and they're going to go straight for the one terabyte. And the optical drive is going to be a native 4K UHD Blu-ray player. So that is awesome to hear. Um, the As comparison, you'll see on the, uh, the picture I'm going to have uploaded with this, uh, the comparison... Blu-ray on both the Xbox One and the PS4 Pro. I do believe that they both scale to 4K. I'm not sure if it's native or not. Um, at least for the Xbox One S, I'm not sure if it's native. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that the PS4 Pro does upscale. It's not native as far as the Blu-ray goes. I could be wrong. Again, I. hey, it is what it is. I don't know everything. So, the specs get announced, and it seems like... The gaming community just like, it, it does the circle thing. You get caught up in these circles. You just go round and round and round. Where when this generation started, the big kick was look at how much more powerful the PS4 Pro, or at the time, PS4 is compared to the Xbox One. Plus a lot of the things that the Xbox One were doing, many gamers, <laughs> despite a lot of them being implemented anyways by developers, uh, it, it it just seemed that, uh, you know, the PS4 was the way to go for many people. It's a more powerful console, and it didn't do all of those things like the always online connected, even though what game don't you play nowadays that you have to be connected to the internet? <laughs> Destiny, I, I do believe you can play Destiny single player, but, you know, Destiny is one of those where you have to connect to servers, uh, the division, Overwatch, you know, you name it. it. It pretty much everything wants to connect to some sort of server to give you the most 
you know, ultimate experience possible. A lot of the Ubisoft games now, you have to connect to Uplay, and oh my god, I, I, I will save my hate for Uplay later at a different time, but right now is not the time for it. So, it, it seems like it, it just, you know, they call it flip-flopping. I like to say that it's a circle. It, 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 it's like a dog that's chasing his tail. So, you know, on one side, as soon as you don't have the more powerful or the, the market going your way, you look for a reason to say, oh, well, that doesn't matter anymore. But whenever it kicks back to you and you have the upper hand in that department, you like to throw that out. And so then the other side is like, oh, well, that doesn't matter anymore. We had it like that for years. And right now with the Scorpio clearly being the more dominant as far as power goes, you're seeing a lot of individuals say, oh, well, it's, it's, it's not about the power anymore. It's about the gameplay. In which, for some people, gameplay does matter. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to Lord Addict. He did have a video uploaded recently where he was talking about how gameplay should still matter for people and for gamers. So um, I'll, I'll leave that video in the description below to go check out and everything if you haven't. Um, hit him up with a subscribe, like, yada, yada, yada. You know, the whole YouTube nonsense. But I digress. So some people like the gameplay. Some people like to have the power. You know, because the more power, the more computation you have going on, the more processing you have. You know, and kind of like, I guess the difference would be um, for, I, I think that the two that I can point out is if you look at something like uh, Dead Rising versus rise whenever the xbox one released both of these were day one titles with dead rising 3 the really cool thing was you had so many enemies that were on the screen and that's that's showing the processing power right there i guess the ps4 equivalent at that time would have been knack there's so much processing going on on the screen that we're talking about things that it has to implement onto the screen and have move around and pretty much it's almost its own AI at that point. That's the processing power. Whereas you look differently with, um, with rise or kill zone at the time. If you look at it, they're, they're really, really pretty games. Really, really pretty. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on, but as far as the computational power, it's not as equal with those games as, it is with the other games. So less stuff going on, but it looks prettier. You know, and, you know, some people will still say that, you know, to this day, Rise is one of the prettiest experiences on the current generation um, to date. <laughs> and that was a, that was a launch title. So I personally like to go somewhere about 60 versus 40. I think 60% of it should rely on the gameplay. You know, if, if, if you're not having a fun time playing the game and you're not being pulled into the story or it's a glitchy mayhem that's on the screen, then you're probably not going to have a good time versus, you know, if it has a, you know, better version of that. Whereas I think 40% of it should be visuals because it still is important. You know, you don't want to play something that does look like trash. I, more, more than likely you could, but it, it doesn't make sense for you. There's a difference for somebody who will turn on a Nintendo 64 and play an old 64 game versus playing something now that looks like a 64 game without adding the computational power with the current model of consoles. So... It's somewhere right between there. I, that That's at least where I believe that gaming should be looking at. So, specs revealed. The gaming community kind of is going in its circle. You know, the dog chasing its tail kind of way. And it, it kind of leaves a lot open for Microsoft, especially with what to do with E3. I know that the last time that I kind of talked about how there were some things that were bothering me with Microsoft, you know, as far as canceled games and so on and so forth. 
So I really feel that this E3, they really have to hit it off. Because we, we know that there are some games that are along the horizon. You know, each one of these big game manufacturer of hardware consoles I don't know what I'm saying I'm making words up as I go so these these uh, companies you know Microsoft Nintendo and Sony they have things on the horizon we all know it you know things like so we have Sea of Thieves going on right now a Crackdown 3 where we're probably going to get more of that more State of Decay 2 but there has to be more at that E3 more of a reason for us to want to pick up a Scorpio and go buy it other than the fact that it's a more powerful console. I'm personally, I've already decided that I do want to get the Scorpio mainly because I want to enter into the 4K arena. That's where I want to be at. Just to see, you know, put, see how it is. I've been wanting to get a 4K TV because they look so pretty. Every time I go into Best Buy, like I'm, I'm sitting there amazed just like looking at how pretty they look. So... This is one of the opportunities to get me to kind of jump into that. That's my reasoning behind it. It is nice that there will be a, a more powerful console to go along with it, but I digress. So for other individuals who are just wanting to pick up the Scorpio, uh, for other individuals who want to pick up the Scorpio as far as playing games as a primary reason for them, I feel that they need to have more of an incentive and more of a reason to go pick this up. There has to be another announcement of something like Dead Rising 4 where they announce it at that E3 and they release it you know, later on that year. That has to happen. Something has to be releasing that says you have to come get this brand new game that we have not told you about. I don't know if that will happen. I personally doubt that that's going to happen. You know, the typical, the Forza, we're more than likely going to have a Forza <laughs> this year again. Uh, there's more than likely going to be a CGI trailer for the next Halo game, Halo 6. And there's probably going to be a couple of more CGI trailers of what they have working on for brand new IPs. Who knows what the, you know, what's going on. Uh, you know, Phil, again, he, I, I think I talked about it briefly last time. Went to Japan, talked with some individuals. Which, kind of ironically, after all of this happens, uh, Square Enix, at least through Reddit, has been saying that they are going to primarily focus on the Switch over the Scorpio. I don't think that that's what they were meaning. I think it's a lost in translation thing that is going on. I personally think that it, it just means that they have more things with Switch going on that they are focusing on as of right now. Because, you know, we're still waiting on the Scorpio to drop. The Switch has been released. Plus, it makes a little bit more sense with Nintendo, you know, a longer relationship between them versus with Microsoft. Uh, I don't know if anybody has played the 3DS games, uh, Bravely Default. If there's one franchise that I would absolutely love to see come to the Switch, it is definitely, definitely, definitely Bravely Default. Other than Pokemon, I will... Ugh. <laughs> Bravely Default was a lot of fun. And it, it changed a lot of the JRPG genre to kind of make it feel less meticulous versus being a little bit more open-ended and easier to get into and to enjoy by giving you different perspectives of how you want to play. Um, I digress. I'm, I'm going way off track. So they have to announce some brand new games, which they should. I, I believe that they will. Uh, pardon me. Uh, new games give us release dates what's coming this year and stop <laughs> stop showing off Cuphead if you're not going to release it <laughs> uh, I want to play that game I really do so that's kind of my hopes of what I hope is going on for E3 so you know the right now is actually a really good time for Xbox actually there's a bit of news that just dropped within the last hour that I kind of picked up on um, okay, so we already know that the spring sales are going on. There's a lot of really good games on there. I have yet to pick anything up because I have a game that I am waiting on next week, which I will talk about later. Um, but I have a couple of games that I still need to finish up and everything. I, 
I may pick up something with the spring sale. You can also get the controller, the uh, one that they'll custom make for you. Uh, pardon me for forgetting what it's called, uh, but you can go to the website, you can build your controller, customize it how you want to and have it sent out. $15 off, I believe was the last thing I saw. I, that's pretty much the price of engraving too. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we actually both got some controllers and everything. We, we absolutely love them. And if we get another controller, it's definitely going to be going through there. Uh, but $15 off of that, so you got that going on. A couple of things that uh, I just kind of like picked up on. Uh, Reddit was showing that Xbox is now going to be doing self-service refunds on the Xbox One. It's, I bel I'm not sure if this is just in the preview program at the moment, but this is what was shown. I'll, I'll show it up here on the screen and everything for you. Uh, this was shared through uh, Daniel Ahmed, Ahmad. Sorry, I, I'm bad with names. Uh, definitely follow him if you want a lot of inside information on the industry, especially as far as marketing. Excellent, excellent person to follow. So, looks like the big keys with this one is game and apps are eligible for self-service refunds within 14 days of purchase if you have less than two hours of play time across all accounts. DLC, season passes, and add-ons are not eligible for self-service refunds. Which before you would have to do a refund by calling in and say like, hey, I didn't mean to purchase this or whatever reason you have. I believe that you have one big time buyback and that was pretty much it. It looks like that they have some stipulations with this. I do like the fact that, you know, they recognize that you might purchase something and never play it. Like I purchased Unity years ago because I got it for $7 off of CD key. You know, I digress. I, I purchased it years ago. I have yet to touch it. I've not touched it. I don't even anticipate touching it. I And that's a problem with Assassin's Creed is I don't really care for the franchise, but I buy all the games for whatever reason. I don't know. I just do. So this will allow individuals, let's say you purchase something, you don't get to touch it, it's within that 14 days, you get to return it. That's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, Porsche and Microsoft did announce a multi-project partnership for the industry leading Forza franchise so it looks like that there's going to be more Porsche cars coming to Forza racing uh, starting with Forza Horizon 3 looks like the Porsche car pack uh, I didn't read too much into this I'll leave a link in the description but it just goes to show that you know some companies still do value Microsoft as far as this goes I is this the first time that Porsche and Microsoft had something like this this I don't know I don't know I'm being dinged by the lady right now so the Porsche partnership the other thing that just dropped as well this was actually just a few minutes before I started recording uh, Microsoft is expecting to hold a big event on May 2nd but do not expect the Surface Pro 5 or Surface Phone so there will be a Microsoft event going on in May. Uh, they, this, it, it may be something as far as the more creators update stuff. Uh, more things going on with Windows 10. Who knows? Maybe a Scorpio reveal? I wouldn't hold my breath to it. I actually said that on Twitter as soon as I saw that. Uh, so there is going to be a big event, and that will be coming up. So enough of uh, all of that. I do have a beer review. I did pre-record it. This is per request by one of my buddies. He wanted to have like a natural reaction to the beer as I drank it. And here it is. So today we're going to be trying a new beer. This one is going to be Coney Island Brewing Company's Hard Cherry Cream Ale. I anticipate this one tasting a lot sweeter than the shandies that we had in the previous video. 
um, or audio, whichever you did. Um, I would imagine being closer to being a cider than anything, but let's see. It's a little different. Um, it's like having a cream soda with alcohol. You could definitely, um, the after effect, you could definitely, um, feel the alcohol in your throat. Um, it kind of tastes like Dr. Robitussin. So, if, I guess if you like what the, uh, the cool kids like to call a syrup, um, minus the lime and lemon of Sprite or 7-Up, whichever you do. I'm not condoning doing any of this. Right. Um, it's a lot like that. It's not bad. Um, it's definitely not like a cider. A cider where you have like a hard zinc right afterwards. Um, the citrusy feel of an apple, uh, like woodchuck or um, yeah, it's just a little different. It's not bad. I could probably see myself buying a six pack of this um, and kicking back, cracking a few open to play with a couple of friends. Yeah, I, I get this one thumbs up. It's not bad. So earlier I was talking about a game that is releasing next week that I am super excited to play. It's called Shyness. It looks like an anime that you play, very JRPG-like. It does have the typical RPG elements. But it also kind of takes a couple of things as far as the action adventure goes, as far as roaming around, and then the puzzler part like you would have in Zelda. And then when you get into fights, it's almost like it becomes a fighter game. And I thought it was really unique how they took a lot of other gameplay elements and they kind of combined it all together to make this game. It's a little bit different than what I typically get. Uh, probably something that I would have gotten as a kid whenever I was still playing, you know, uh, Sakuden and Harvest Moon, among other uh, JRPGs way back in the day. It looks awesome. I can't wait. It does release next week. This actually, this game itself caused me to look up. I, I wanted to know who the publisher slash developer would be, and it led me to Focus Home Interactive, which some games I recognized, and some games were new to me so uh, a couple of the games that they have coming out they have a really good lineup these are the individuals they make the space uh, the space hulk series and sticks uh, there's a couple of other things that they did publish uh, they didn't necessarily develop all of them uh, the surge is one of them that is releasing this one releases next month i, I can't remember the exact date uh, but surge releases next month there's another game that they showed off last E3 that it, uh, the more gameplay I see about it, it looks so fun. It's called Vampire. Uh, it has a subtitle with it as well. It, again, eluding me at the moment. Another game that they had, and it's a CGI trailer, but it, it kind of left an impression on me. And I, I really want to know more about this game. I want to know what it's about more in depth. And I want to know what style of game it is because the CGI trailer makes it look fun. It looks like a really good setting. And that's probably the good thing about CGI trailers is they, they do something really unique as far as being able to give you a setting to let your imagination run wild of what it could be like. And that's the power of CGI trailers. And it, it, it sucks because you see the, the trailer and it doesn't always pan out the way that you think that it would play out. You know, uh, Destiny might be like a good example of that, the prior ones. And even this new Destiny, there's a chance that some of that stuff that we think is going to be present might not even be present. Who knows? But these games, they, they look awesome. And Greedfall looks amazing. When I saw this guy, he it looks like a, it looks like it's a, you know around the revolutionary time frame because of the uh, musket style. It looks like he's chasing a, around a uh, Native American shaman or just a wildling shaman or something like this, or druid. 
and he shoots her and she falls down and he comes to stand over he's like i'm about to get you and she's kind of like grinning and laughing while bleeding out and everything and this you know this thing that looked like a skeleton of tree branches just lunges at him you know with a deer head and just like bucks him and throws him up in the air and it, it just looked awesome it, it looked awesome and i can't wait to see more about greedfall uh i will probably leave their twitter down there you guys can follow these games these are just some gems that you know, i had never heard of focus home interactive and i know that right now i sound like i'm fanboying and i'm gushing over them it's because i am they look awesome they, they look very unique and i feel like that that's something that is kind of missing from a lot of these big publishers is some of these smaller publishers and these indie developers they are willing to take risks and they are willing to break the mold but with the big publishers they want everything to be so cookie cut and they are afraid to get out of that lane because they want to make these high sales that a lot of the times it causes them to give out these franchises that end up running dry and you get bored with we're seeing that with franchises like call of duty we were seeing it happen to battlefield before they did battlefield one to re, you know reinvigorate it and it just happens all the time you know so maybe this is just a sign where the publishers should take a little bit of a key note from these smaller publishers and break the mold a little bit you know Imagine if, if they were able to give that AAA budget to some of these new IP and give as much tender love and care to some of these indie developers. Because as you all know, what one of my favorite games of all time right now is Ark Survival Evolved. I am always playing Ark. I have a lot of buddies that play Ark. I support so many content creators that, you know, love the game. Even whenever it sounds like that I'm bitching and crying about things going on, it doesn't change the fact that I enjoy playing the game and what they've given me because they broke the mold and they wanted to do something different. And for Studio Wildcard, I definitely, you know, tip my hat to them as far as that goes. And we're we're seeing a lot of those survival esque style games start to rise up and everything. I call it the Daisy effect. Uh, I digress. So uh a couple weeks ago we did get to see the Destiny 2 trailer. It looks really good. Um, it was a very funny trailer because we got to see Gary or Glenn or something with the G pretty much go in and destroy the tower. And I believe the last episode I, I said that is something that I want to see happen. I want to see the Cabal come in and this and that. Um, I started doing some lore digging and I wanted to know a little bit more about some of the things from the, the Grimoire cards and everything. And yes, I could have gone and read them, but... Uh, one of my newer YouTubes that I follow, YouTubers I should say rather, uh, that I follow. Here, well, give me a second, let me get the name. I got all of these windows open. And uh, Mylan Games, uh, he follows along the Grimmar cards. He kind of puts a little of uh, perspective. He also adds in a little bit of his insight and his thoughts and his anticipations with some of the stuff. And I can't remember what video it was, but it kind of got me thinking about the factions and how one of my biggest uh, gripes about the last game was factions seem to take a back seat. And I don't think that the factions really have much more to do other than aesthetic appearances and maybe a little bit of variation in the weaponry and armory, of course. But I noticed... In the trailer, you can see a lot of uh, my personal favorite and my faction choice, New Monarchy. You can see a lot of New Monarchy individuals that are running around there, right? And the thing that I was watching from Mylan Games had a lot to do with Future War Cult and how they seem to be keen on checking out the Vex. I believe it, uh, the, the video was something to do with uh, Fallen Comrades. It, that means that the Fallen would actually be helping the Guardians rather than fighting against the Guardians. So it kind of made me think about like why that would be. And I started thinking about the factions because 
It's like, okay, well, why is only Future War Cult the only one going after the Bex? And I started thinking, maybe some of these factions of the three main factions are there because each one of the factions are going after a different enemy type. So if we remove the Fallen, because now the Fallen, it seems like that some of them are allies, so anybody could be going after them and anybody could not be going after them, right? So if Future War Cult is going after Vex, and we see the Cabal coming in, and they're attacking you know, the tower, and they're attacking the, the last city, and they're taking over the Traveler, and we see a bunch of new monarchy, it almost makes sense that Dead Orbit is a faction that goes after the Hive. Now, some of this stuff, maybe it's it's been a known thing, and I'm just very ignorant to the universe, but I just started thinking, maybe, what, what if? What if? Um, let me know what you think about the factions. Do you want to see more of a role going on with the factions? Let me know in the, the comments section below. Maybe I might be able to get one of the Iron Lords to come do one of these with me, and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about um, our anticipations of Destiny 2 and what we hope to see, especially as far as the, the lore goes and so on and so forth with that. But going on for that, uh, we do have the next set of ARC updates. I did do a video recently, so now we know that the the PC patch for March will be coming to the consoles as well as a couple of other additional upgrades to the UI as far as the menu UI as well as any kind of patches that they would be doing standardly to the uh, Xbox and the PlayStation. And I, I believe last time I said how I was taking an arc break, I actually ended up joining a buddy's tribe. Uh, I'm not going to give any names, but he knows who he is. Shout out to you, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, taking me in and under your wing as far as this circumstance goes. Um, definitely appreciated. He's somebody who I've played with on multiple servers. Um, and we kind of went our separate ways, but now we found ourselves back under the same banner, which is pretty awesome to see. Um, so I'm back into playing Ark again. I don't have to play it as much as I used to play, which is nice because I was always in a smaller tribe. But now that I'm in a tribe that has more members, you know, some of the duties are kind of spread out among more members. So I digress. So the March update for the PCs coming to the X the Xbox and the PlayStation 4. So we'll get those. That's ETA to be on April 24th. However, we know how, you know, it's not always Studio Wildcard's fault. Sometimes they submit it on time and it takes longer for Microsoft or PlayStation, you know, or Sony, I guess, uh, to actually say, okay, you can, uh, you know, deploy it. A lot of that has to do with, you know, they have to run all of the tests and the bigger the patch is, it just means the longer that they have to sit there with it and fumble around with it just to make sure that it doesn't break anything on their end. Because the last thing that they want to do is install a patch that ends up opening up all of these security flaws to, let's say, your account information, and it makes it easy for you to be hacked. That's the last thing they want to see happen. That That's what causes a lot of that to be delayed. So the bigger the patch, the longer it's going to take. Uh, we did get a little bit more of what will be coming for this month for the PC. And it does look like, uh, so we have the PC patch. It's ETA for the PC on April 30th. They have the Giant B. They have the Deodon, the, the Kentrosaurus, and an L word, which I cannot pronounce. I'll have to look this up later. So four new dinos. Tech cloning chamber, a megalodon saddle. So essentially, you have friggin' sharks with friggin' lasers. Uh, tech turret, tech grenade, tech cave, and the volcano, which that's gonna be awesome. I'll talk about that here in a second. The ascension, uh, the ascension uh, game progress, more UI overhauls, new hairstyles, facials, and 20 new explorer notes. Down the line, they still show dynamic length bridges. More creatures, gears, armors, weapons, structures, boss wars, Direct 12 or DirectX 12 mode for Windows 10, which is good because that gets us closer to be able to have PC hosting. Uh, I can't wait. And possibly even, uh, I, I believe that they talked about having PC versus console to be able to connect to one another. Not like actual versus, but 
to be able to connect and they were uh, describing having like Steam and PS4 and then Windows 10, you know, all the way across the board. So if you, that means that they would end up having to put it on the Windows 10 store or if you buy it on your Xbox, maybe it's a Play Anywhere title. I believe it actually is a Play Anywhere title eventually. Uh, specific representation, uh, specific representative on ground meshes for all dropped items. So essentially what they're doing is they're going to be getting rid of the boxes. And if you drop meat, it's going to look like you threw meat on the ground. So on and so forth. Random GPU driver crash fix, true skies. Of course, that all is all later on. So uh, we'll just circle in. So the cloning chamber, so you'll be able to clone your dinos. A megalodon saddle, so that like the, uh, the mosasaur and the rex, you'll have a tech saddle. Tech turret, so maybe it shoots lasers instead. A tech grenade, maybe it explodes plasma, I don't know. The tech cave, which is going to be integral, an integral part to the ascension game progress. And then the volcano. The cool thing that they're doing with the volcano, I don't know how it's going to work, and we'll see how it plays out, but my anticipation with the volcano, they're telling everybody, move away. <laughs> they got uh, some markers. I'll put the marker up here in the uh, video. They got markers set down. And they're saying if you're on this area, you probably want to move. Now, they said that they may downscale it or upscale it, you know, change it based on what they feel they need to do. But they're saying move away. So I'm anticipating actual random explosions by the volcano where it violently erupts. And I am anticipating fallout from these eruptions where... Maybe you're running by and you get struck by a molting rock that, you know, just happens to hit you at the right spot, right time. You know, kind of like if you play um, the one mode, I can't I can't think of it for the life of me right now. Uh, but essentially, they're 30 day servers and you'll see up there extinction, extinction. That's what they're called. Like in extinction, you see the comet way up top. And it looks like a bunch of uh, broken pieces of the comet is coming down or the asteroid, whatever it is. Uh, maybe this is an actual thing that, like, it'll drop and hit you. And things that will damage your structure, kill your dinos, kill you. That would be awesome. I would absolutely love it. It's pretty ballsy of them to try to do something like that. But I think that it would add so much to the gameplay. So that's pretty much everything that I have for today. I know that I kind of wanted to shorten these up, and I think this one's a little bit shorter than the last time. So next time, hopefully, I can cut about another five minutes off, and we'll try to get this thing down. Um, you'll be able to download all of the audio for later. If you do watch this through YouTube, I do recommend just, just listen to the audio. You don't have to watch the video because it's not an actual video that I'm doing. It's pretty much stagnant photos. Um, I, again, I digress. Thank y'all. Um, be sure to check out Playback Gaming uh, for a lot of our updates that we do as far as with ARC and the games that we're interested in. We don't do all of the news. Um, it's a little bit too much for us to like do, but things that we're interested in, and we're hoping that the people that follow us are interested in the same stuff, so definitely check us out over there. We're always updating ARC. We're going to be getting right back into Destiny. Another one of my writers, uh, she absolutely loves survival horror games, and she's always talking about the newest and latest one that you can check out. So do uh, come check us out over there. And I thank you all. You know, Follow me on Twitter, at idizzy81. Like, subscribe, or dislike if you want. Um, hit me up with the subscribe. I, I would really like to try to get my uh, subscriptions up, You know, especially if you made it this far. You know, maybe... I didn't bore you to death, put you to sleep. Maybe I did put you to sleep. I don't know. I find my own voice annoying. <laughs> Thank y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day.